night, good morning, or good afternoon, guys. I woke up super late. Today, we're gonna be playing at the wind. As always, I'm gonna get some food right beforehand, and I'm gonna pick up George afterwards. We're gonna head to the wind and play some 2-5. So I'll see you guys at lunch. We'll pick up George, and then I'll see you at the wind. Hey guys, this is me at the end of the day. You know what I forgot to forget to do? Uh, turn off the fan. While waiting for George to get ready, I go and grab some lunch at Chef Kenny's once again. I had been there a couple days earlier and it was amazing guys. I put it up in top tier with the Modern Vegan and Nacho Daddy. I'd honestly say it's probably number one out of all the places I would regularly go to in Vegas. So please give it a try if you're in the area, you will not be disappointed. So guys, I was trying to record like an intro before we played and I ended up pressing the record button again. So this is the very last frame of this clip. But in case you guys missed the last episode, this is George. He ended up having a crazy session one night at Aria. He started at 1-3 and then ended up running up a big stack, meeting someone, and then that person got him into the VIP game at Aria where he played with Dan Biltzerian, Chris Eubank, and some other people. And he ended the night with over 14k, so not a bad session from starting at 1-3. It's a pretty crazy experience to have when you're in the first couple years of your poker journey, so good for George. I ended up meeting him a couple days later and ended up telling his story to him, not knowing that he was the guy, and then we ended up talking, both agreed to play at the win the next day, and here we are, so wish both of us luck. I buy into the win game for 1500, which is the max, same as Aria. First hand of the vlog, we've got pocket fives in the big blind. Action folds all the way to the small blind, who is none other than George. He opens to 15. Obviously, I got a call here. We've got a small pocket pair, blind versus blind. And of course, it's George. We got to get involved in the hand. So I make the call. Flop comes down. Five, deuce, ace, guys. We've got middle set on an ace high board. Somewhat coordinated. George puts out a bet of $10. We want to make it bigger, so I make it 35. He ends up calling. We're going to a turn, which is the eight of spades, and given the action, I don't expect this is gonna hit either of us. This time, George checks. I wanna bet bigger here and get a lot of value. I make a pretty big bet of 75. He calls once again. The river's the queen of clubs, so pretty safe board overall. We shouldn't really feel like we're ever behind here. George checks to me once again. We're almost certainly ahead now. And this time, I make a very big bet of $200. And in hindsight, I don't like this bet at all. I think I should make it maybe like 150 or something. I think sizing it to 200 makes it just too easy for him to make a good fold with something like Ace Jack. Given that I raise flop, bet big turn, and then bet big river, I think this is just screaming value. That being said, there is a dynamic we kind of established in the last session where we both kind of agreed to make plays at each other and both did. So that could play a part in this, especially because it's blind versus blind. At the time, I was probably just thinking to myself that I could use this dynamic and this kind of image to maybe squeeze out a little bit more value. But I think it's better to just size it to 150 and go for consistent, but still decent value. And unfortunately, George ends up folding. Good fold from him. He did tank for a while before doing so, and uh, looks like we lost value here, but a win is a win. Speaking of George, this next hand is all him. I'm not involved in any way. George is in the low jack and opens it up to 15. The player on the button calls, and the small blind, who seemed like a reg, three bets to $75. Action folds back to George. He makes it 175 this time. The button gets out of the way, and once action is back on the small blind, he ends up just calling here. Both players are pretty deep, we're going to a flop heads up, and I'm just going to keep George's cards hidden. The flop comes down 4-4 four, four deuce rainbow, the small blind checks it over to George. I imagine George is c-betting almost all of his 4-bet range on this board. He does put out a bet of 125, just about a third pot. The small blind ends up calling him, the turn brings the 9 of diamonds, bringing a backdoor flush draw. This is a little more likely to have helped the small blind as George probably wouldn't 4-bet with pocket 9s, but the small blind could have very well called with those. There are only a few combos of those though. The small blind checks to George once again and George isn't scared. He continues with a bet of 300 this time, about half pot. The small blind calls once again. The river is a 3 of hearts. If George by any chance had ace-5 suited, which he definitely could 4-bet as a bluff, he would now have a wheel. Otherwise, over pairs should also feel very comfortable here, especially when the small blind checks once again. It now looks like the small blind probably has something between like tens and queens. George thinks about it for quite a while, and then eventually says something along the lines of, I don't think you're folding, and then he finally checks back, saying he has king high. The small blind shows ace eight of diamonds for ace high. So he called the four bet pre with a suited ace, 
flopped a backdoor flush and backdoor straight draw and then turned the nut flush draw only to break the river but fortunately for him George ended up not firing again. I wish he did because it would have been cool for the vlog and I'm sure the guy wouldn't have made the hero call. We're also obviously rooting for George so it just sucks to see him lose a pot but he's a good player and he can definitely make it back. George feel free to leave what you had down in the comments. It's time to get back to the star of the vlog which is me by the way. There's a straddle in this next hand. I've got pocket queens on the button. I make it $35 once the action folds to me. The big blind calls and then the straddler also calls. He's the player in the previous hand who played against George. We're going to a flop three ways. It comes down jack, deuce, three with two spades. Fairly safe board for my hand. We've still got an overpair. So once both players check to me, I have a very straightforward decision. I bet about half pot, $55, and both of my opponents call. We're going to a turn card, which is the six of diamonds. Both players check to me once again, and we're still feeling super comfortable with queens here. No tough decision. I make it 175 this time. This time, the big blind gets out of the way, but the straddler ends up making the call. There's a good chance to get revenge for George. The river comes down a very safe eight of hearts. We feel like we're ahead here almost no matter what. If we were beat, we probably would have seen a raise earlier, especially when there were more players in the hand. So once my opponent checks to me, the only tough decision I have is to think about how much to bet. And ultimately, I settle on a sizing of $200, about a third pot. I do want to get some crying calls from like middling jacks and stuff that feel obligated to call. I think if I bet big like I did in the very first hand against George, I'm just giving the opportunity for top pairs to make good folds here. So I make it $200. My opponent doesn't think about it for too long before eventually calling. So we pretty much know we're good here. I turn over my hand and my opponent does in fact muck. So we do end up winning this nice pot. I didn't win all of George's money back, but hopefully he can take the rest. So far the session's been pretty chill, no tough decisions. We got a small pocket pair that turned into a set, a big pocket pair that stayed in overpair the whole hand. It's time for the suited connector guys. We've got eight seven of clubs on the button for this next one. There's another under the gun straddle to $10. Action folds to me, I make it $40 this time. Only the straddler calls, we're going heads up to a flop. My read on my opponent is that he's tight and seems solid. The flop comes down seven ace five with two diamonds. We've got middle pair here and once my opponent checks to me, I see that I've got some showdown value and not really much else besides some backdoor straight draws. So I decided to just check it back. I'm not really getting anything better to fold here and nothing worse is really giving me value. The turn comes down the eight of spades. So we've now got two pair. This also brings in a second flush draw. So pretty wet board and my opponent actually bets this time. He makes it $50 and obviously not going anywhere. The question is whether to call or to raise. I ended up just calling, but I think raising makes a lot more sense. I've got two pair on a really wet board and I'm probably getting called by all the flush draws, potentially some straight draws as well. So I think it should be a raise, but let me know what you think. The river's the 10 of diamonds, completing the front door flush, and it does also complete jack nine if my opponent had that. So not the best card. And my opponent ends up betting again, this time making it 105. Having kind of an under rep two pair here, I can't really fold for this price. So I make the call and my opponent rolls over six, nine of hearts guys. So he turned the straight unfortunately and we're just gonna lose to the old six, nine here. Can't really complain here. We lost the minimum, hands like this happen. And so far the rest of the session has been good. So we're just gonna have to move on to the next hand. Guys, we've got ace king in the hijack for this next one. The low jack opens it up to $25. Of course, I'm going to three bet here. I make it 85. Action folds to the button and he puts out a cold four bet to $225. Action folds back to the initial razor in the low jack. He gets out of the way. We are now heads up and I've got a decision here. I could very well call and I could also five bet. Being out of position, I might lean more towards a five bet than usual. I like to play ace king very aggressively pre-flop, almost exactly how I play aces. We've got several things to consider here. One of them is my opponent's stack size. We've got him covered and he started with around 1300-ish. So that's the effective stack we're going to be thinking about. I've also got to decide what I think my opponent's capable of cold four betting with. I don't know if many players will really do this as a bluff, but I think he could very well do this with something like queens or maybe even jacks sometimes, depending on the person. I ultimately decide that I want a five bet here. If I can get a better hand to fold, then that'd be great. I think my opponent's capable of laying down queens here. 
I5 bet to 550. Obviously, I'm giving my opponent a really good price on a call here, but I know that he's aware of our stack sizes and he knows that he's very likely to face an all in on the flop. So, this kind of tells the same message, I think, as raising bigger. It could look to him like I have aces or kings and I'm trying to get him to call this really small raise so that he's committed on the flop if it comes down safe. So, I think this does look really strong and if he does decide to six bet all in, I'm just gonna call it off and hope for the best. My opponent does not look happy, he goes into the tank, so we know at least that he's considering a fold here, which is good for us, and we probably got equity, I don't think he's ever going to be tanking here with kings, so we're just hoping for the best, and after a long period of tanking, my opponent does end up making the fold. Given that he folded, we were probably either chopping against ace-king or flipping against queens or maybe potentially jacks. Either way, very nice to win a pot of this size uncontested. Let me know how you guys would approach this spot. I feel like in situations like this, which come up pretty often, both just calling and raising can be fine, but I feel like it comes down to small factors that might tip the decision one way or the other, and, you know, I wouldn't blame anyone for doing either one. Luckily, it worked out for me this time, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. I'm in the hijack for this next one. We've got King Jack offsuit, aka my favorite hand, Jack King off. There's an under the gun open to $15 from a player named Jaden. He was a younger guy from Irvine, which is a neighboring city to where I live, and he seemed like a very solid player. He was running absolutely terribly that day. I don't remember specific hands, but he was just losing all in pots after all in pots. And this was while he was in Vegas on vacation with, I believe, his wife and his wife's parents or something like that he took it like a total champ and didn't show any signs of being tilted so big shout out to Jaden if you're watching this your mental game is insane man anyways once action's back on me I three bet to fifty dollars Jaden makes the call we're going to a flop heads up guys I cannot make this up we flop this straight the flop comes down queen ace ten rainbow Seriously, just no hard decisions this session. Jaden checks it over to me, and I check back, not wanting to scare him off. I have blockers to a lot of paired hands he could have, so I don't really want to bet right away, especially being nutted. The turn comes with three of hearts. This time, Jaden bets $60. I flat here, uh, again, not wanting to scare him off, but if you think a raise is better, then let me know. The river comes down the eight of spades. We're still very comfortable, and once Jaden bets again, this time making it 130, I do kind of an amateur move and I do an instant raise to 260 to try to just fake a timing tell and like get thin value from two pair plus and a uh, classic doge bag line. I don't like my play in hindsight. Uh, I just feel like doing weird moves like this is just so transparent, especially to good players. So it was just a bad raise. I think I think I should just take my time and think of a decent sizing, but whatever. That's what I ended up doing. And Jaden thinks about it for a while and eventually makes a fold. I believe he actually had something and wasn't just posturing, so good fold by him. Definitely a little misplayed by me. Good fold, man. Nice bet good either fold. way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I tried to do the timing tell mix up where I like insta raise you and then like, I don't know, you might think like, oh, this young guy's just trying to run me over some, some <laughs> shit like that, you know? No, no, no. The min raise on the river, it's like, it always gets me. Because I like, obviously want to call, yeah. but then knowing that they might do that to make it, I don't know. There's yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a leveling thing. Yeah. And then because you also checked the flop, so I was like, oh, yeah, maybe yeah. he got a king jack, flop it. It's like they, they laid you such a good price. Yeah, but exactly. they also laid you such a good price. Yeah, like, they know they laid you such a good price. It's such a good price, but the but they know they emotionally they it felt know, like yeah. I'm, I'm not good there. They know they can I just had a price. price. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, we end up doing a table change, and the new table we moved to was really fun and social. But unfortunately, I just didn't get that much footage of it because I wasn't involved in many hands. Eventually though, a seat opens up to my right and a very clearly drunk kid sits down in that seat. If I hadn't seen him inside of the poker room, I would not have believed that this guy was 21 or older. And uh, I'll just let the footage speak for itself, but this guy was definitely a character. Don't worry, brother man, brother man. I bought in for like a hundred bucks at the craft table and I ended with one of the chips. So I, I kept on going, I kept on going until I had <laughs> I kept on going, brother man. Look at this. I want to buy him for a hundred bucks, brother man. Like, listen to that. That's crazy. That's pretty good. And then I got one of these purple chips, brother man. Wow. All the way from a hundred. Yeah. Let Let me trade that for that I, yellow, though. I I can't say I have a purple chip, so I. <laughs> All right. Let's trade. You get the legendary yellow chip, man. Right, brother man. 
Brother man. Thank you, brother man. Thank you, brother man. Oh, Bro <laughs> the fake yellow. <laughs> it's gone. Fake ass yellow. You bought a car protection weapon for a size of the balance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hop in a taxi, they're like, oh, you know who BTS is? I'm like, they looked at you and they immediately thought of BTS. Yeah. <laughs> like, Keep up stories. I love my mills, brother. Brother man. I love the 40 year old women. No, but like, Dude, for real though, they literally look at me so crazy, you bro. made. They look at me the so side crazy, I told you bro. They look at me so crazy. Yeah. These women, bro. They're no, but they stopped me because they think I work here, but I don't work here. No. I, I was a banker back in the day, you know, back in my head. It, for real though, I was an investment banker back in my head. It. This guy's favorite word was very clearly brother man. Eventually, he sees that I'm recording some of my hands for the vlog, and he asks me what it's for. I eventually tell him about my YouTube channel and how it's called Dogebag, and he asks me why I called it Dogebag in the first place, which I don't think I've ever explained in the vlog, but basically, I just thought it was a funny play on the word douchebag, and I've always liked the Doge meme, so I just named myself Dogebag, and immediately after I finish explaining this to him, the player sitting to my left pulls out this douchebag plaque that you're seeing on the screen right now, and he just tosses it on the table in front of me and says I could keep it. And the story behind this, if I remembered correctly, is that this guy would have home games with his friends and he had multiple of these plaques printed so that you could just throw them on the table every time you wanted to go all in as just kind of like a funny gesture to the person you're up against. So this was super awesome and definitely one of the coolest gifts I've ever received, especially considering just the random context that I got it. So the guy who gave this to me was named Mark. It was really cool to get this gift from him. And yeah, thank you, Mark, if you're watching this. <laughs> I love this too. Thank Thank you, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. What's your name? Mark. Mark, I'm Kiet. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Alright guys, it's time to get back into the hand histories. I've got King Queen in this one. I'm in under the gun and I raise it up to $25. The low jack calls and the player in the big blind is Brother Man. He calls as well. We're going to a flop three ways and it comes down Queen High, 8 Queen 10 with 2 spades. We've got top pair here and a good kicker. The big blind checks. I bet $55. Once the low jack folds, brother man ends up calling. We're going to a turn card. It's the ace of clubs. Not the greatest card. We do pick up a gut shot, but it does make the board ace high and our hand goes down in value a bit. Brother man checks to me and this is a very clear check. My hand isn't that much stronger and I'm probably not getting called by much worse. So I decide to bet 75. Brother man calls. And in all seriousness, I probably just bet here because I figured he was an action player, but as we've seen several times in my vlogs, this kind of thinking tends to put me in some weird spots, so definitely do not recommend doing this. I think a check is just the right play here. We're going to a river card, which is the king of diamonds. We do have two pair now, but obviously there's four no straight on the board, so two pair isn't really much different from that many worse hands. And brother man instantly shoves for 286. And guys, this is just a very, very clear fold. There's no reason to even think about this, but for some reason, I thought about it for a while first. And eventually, Brother Man shows us the 10 of hearts just to make things a little interesting. And then he gives us a little speech just for content. Oh my God. Oh yeah, Ooh. I know, honestly. Oh, uh, it's two the seventy or two whatever. It doesn't matter, same thing. I call, I call, I call. Nice hand. <laughs> Alright, let's count it up. Alright. Uh, 200. No, 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 it's poker. We were just f***ing around, brother man, and we ended up getting the hero card. <laughs> we were f***ing around, we got the hero card. 280, 286. 286, you got it. And now we're going home, everybody. Nice playing with everybody. No. Here you go. Oh, here we go, here we go. No, 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 no. I totally fucked up if I didn't do anything. Crazy as after I just won that hand, you know, like I gotta do something really crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Nice hand, bro. Nice hand. Sorry, brother. No, no, don't be. Don't be. <laughs> I'll show you the one. <laughs> I knew I was getting action, but I was just like, you're in China. Uh, you're in China. 
So as you guys can see, I make a very terrible, terrible call. And unfortunately, this is definitely not even one of the worst hands I've played on the vlog. So if you're a longtime viewer, I'm sure you're not too surprised. But we're just going to have to lose this one, unfortunately. And we get owned by Brother Man, partly by myself because I convinced myself that he was making a big play. And then partly by him because of his speech play and showing the 10 and all that. So my money is just going to end up in the hands of someone more deserving, eventually. Soon after this, Mark gets some revenge for us. He's in a three-way pot against Brother Man and another player. He shoves on the turn, getting both of the other players to fold, and he shows that he had the goods. Good move, brother man. Nice hand. Nice hand. Unfortunately, brother man leaves pretty soon after this. He didn't want to lose his $1,000 chip, and I don't blame him. If he really did start with just $100 at the craps table, he had a dream gambling session at Vegas, so congrats to him. Alright guys, this is going to be the last notable hand for the vlog. There's a limp from under the gun, I'm in the small blind with pocket 9s, and we're going to bump it up here. I make it $25, and my opponent calls. So we're going to a flop heads up. It comes down 10 ace deuce with 2 clubs. I decide to c bet here for $35, just kind of playing my range I guess, and my opponent calls. Not really sure about my bet here, but we're going to a turn. It's a 5 of spades. I decide to bet again, I make it 85 and he calls. Honestly, looking back at this hand, I'm kind of lost on my logic. The only kind of solid reasoning I could see from this is that betting keeps really strong hands in my range that I would play in a similar way, and there are several hands my opponent could get sticky with that I could potentially get to give up on the river or something, but with that logic, I could justify betting with any hand, and that's just kind of silly. So, yeah, I wouldn't really recommend playing like this with my particular hand. Anyways, we're going to a river, and it's the Queen of Spades. I decide to stop messing around and I just check. At this point, I'm probably only getting like flush draws to fold and some weak aces and those hands I'm beating at showdown anyways. Not really sure what I'm going to do if my opponent bets, but he decides to check back. Weirdly played by me, but whatever. I show my hand and then he shows us queen nine of clubs. So he did in fact have a flush draw all the way through except for on the river. My opponent was named June and he was actually at the same table with me and George in the last session at Aria but we didn't talk to him until this session. So good for him and a well deserved win considering I played that hand kind of questionably. And after this George and I didn't stay much longer, we just play a couple more hands I think and then end up heading out. Wasn't playing my best at this point and I think it was time to wrap up the session. <laughs> I don't know if he's still fun now. Good luck. For the blog. Alright, you gotta go now. Blood. Oh, yes. man. Yes. Pocket King's good. Yes. Pocket King's good. That's pocket King's? Thing, the Pocket King's you flatted with? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no. <laughs> what did I raise? 220? Yeah. yeah. Ah. <laughs> I, had a, I had enough flush draw, enough flush draw. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what are you doing to me, Jerry? What is this? I'll tell you what, Miss Rilla. He's got chips. I don't know. I don't know. You got it right. Wow. I wow. definitely thought that's what he had. Yeah. I saw you it. Got that right. Forget these three. I'm like, he doesn't need the river. No. Good hand, G. Like 90% of people that make YouTube channels don't make any money off it. Awesome. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. That's fantastic. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Keep making videos, you'll get there eventually. Before you just pay an editor, and then you can just get paid to play home. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like what Rampage is doing. I don't know. I don't think he's. I mean. I don't know. Thank you. It was a good day, man. It was a good day. Alright guys, good session today for both of us. I profited 8 
what did it? 823, 820-ish. Yeah, uh, I bought them for 1500 and then ended up cashing out for 2323. How about you, George? I'm in for 23 and out for 2830. So all right, all right, 500. Plus, plus 530. Hey, that's, uh, we played for like 10 hours, so that's like 50 an hour. Yeah. Pretty awesome. 80 an hour, <laughs> my God. Back at Excalibur. Oh, pretty great day, guys. Yeah, we played for about 10 hours. All right, friends, we are back in the room. I'm very tired. It is, uh, it is now 4 a.m. 10 hour session, good session. Just before I end the vlog though, I wanna give a big shout out to all the people I met at the poker table today. We had a lot of fun. Shout out to Jaden, uh, he lives in Irvine, which is a neighboring city of mine, and happy birthday to Adam, whose birthday it was today. Big shout out to Mark for the uh, douchebag plaque. Shout out to Chris, June, Vincent, if I missed anyone I met today, sorry. But big shout out to George. He had a great winning session today too. He ran a two barrel bluff that he unfortunately gave up on on the river. And uh, after that big can, he made a big comeback and was able to net a win. So, all right guys, with that, we are planning to play at the win once again tomorrow. I gotta get to bed and rest for that session. And I will see you guys in the next vlog. Hope you enjoyed today's vlog. Peace.